Obviously it's a somewhat freaky to have such a giant platform and for that to be taken away at any moment. Obviously, you know, I've put thousands of hours into YouTube, into creating YouTube videos. I wake up, the first thing I do before I talk to anyone, before I turn on my phone, is open up a laptop, go on my YouTube channel and make sure it's still there. Go on my Twitter account, make sure it's still there. To the point mentally where I don't want to be told your YouTube's been wiped, your Twitter's been wiped, whatever, from somebody on the phone. I want to check it myself before I even turn on the phone, before I even check the news or interact with the world in any way. I check if my YouTube channel's still there. I do that every day now. I don't go out to put out, there are fake news websites, let's get it clear, that profit from what they know is deliberate fake news. I've never done that. Infowars doesn't deliberately do that. Yes, we make mistakes, but um, in terms of me personally, how I feel about it, you know, I've just got a YouTube channel and a Twitter account. If they're that terrified of me, like that just shows their own insecurity. It's really interesting. You self-censor. I mean, you, you f whenever anybody gets banned or suspended, the first question is why? And then, okay, well, I won't do that. But when it gets to the point where saying there are only two genders justifies an instant ban on Twitter, then the level of self-censorship um, gets to unparalleled levels. Um, I've moderated my behaviour on Twitter in terms of not getting into confrontations with people, generally speaking. I used to do that way more. Way more. I mean, you can look at my analytics on Twitter. I used to tweet a thousand times a month, now it's 500, so I've literally cut it in half simply through not getting involved in spats with people. And my, on a personal level, yeah, it, there have been some effects. Like. I was in a relationship for a good few years and this girl's family was very left-wing and there were some problems with that. And she would read the hate on Twitter and then we'd go out publicly, we'd go for dinner or whatever, and she would be constantly looking around, oh, he recognised you, he's taking photos of you, just random people walking past us in the street. And I was like, no, that's just somebody taking a photograph of a building. So it, it was strange because it got to her more than it got to me. So it does impact your private life to some extent. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of close friends who share very similar beliefs. But, you know, as you've seen with people like Gavin McKins in the situation at his, you know, his house and stuff, it, it, it can have a massive effect. The, the sheer vitriol directed against you, it can have a real world effect. I exercise. I mean, socially, my friends, we all talk about the same things. We all talk about politics constantly. Like, there's no relief from it, but... And that is, that is very intense to a certain extent. Um, but when you're so obsessed with something and so invested in it, you don't really need to wind down. I mean, I'll, I will read a book. I will finish my work. At, my work's never finished. It's never finished. Sometimes I turn my phone off for like eight hours during a day and it's bliss. And it's like living in an alternate reality just to be slightly disconnected. But... Um, in terms of winding down, not really, but obviously in the back of my head I'm aware of the fact that at some stage everything comes to an end and I'm going to have to start a family and actually live more of a conventional life, you know, at the same time.